Here we're going to be factoring by the AC method. Sure. Is it getting hot in here? Oh, I don't know. Um, AC method refers to taking the product of the leading coat term, yeah, and the constant, finding that product, breaking it into its factors, so that we can tell whether or not something is factorable. Well, over the integers. And when I say that something, I mean things that are quadratic. Okay. Or expressions that are quadratic. Sure. Uh, I put up three of them up here. Here I want to identify my A, my B, and my C. Okay, see? Here my A is 3, my B is 7, and my C is 2. Oh, now I want to take a product of A and C. Yeah. So then A times C, see? That's going to be 3 times 2. Oh, and then that's... Six? Yeah, all right. I see where this is going. Now I need to find the factors of six. Yeah, so I break it down. Oh, all right, stop. It's factor time. One and six and two and three. Then they're all close and stuff, so I know I can stop. Here my product is positive, so I know that these need to add to be seven. Yeah, your middle coefficient. Sure. Do any of these factors add to be 7? Yes, it does appear that 1 and 6 are going to add to be 7. So what I want to do is I want to write an equivalent expression. An equivalent expression. Here I'm going to rewrite my middle term. This is going to be 3x squared. This says the signs are the same and they're both positive. Yeah. So I'm going to do plus x plus 6x plus 2. What I do? Here I um, rewrote this. These are the same. If I were to add 1 and 6, they'd be 7. I did that so that I could factor by grouping. Factor by grouping. Sure. Do I have a common factor in this first group? It appears I have an x. So I'm going to pull that out. So I pull an x on the outside, left on the inside. I'm going to have a 3x plus 1. Fun. Yeah. And then in the second group. What do I pull out of that second group? Yeah, it appears to be a 2. So I pull a 2 out of that second group. Is it going to be a positive 2 or a negative 2? A positive 2. So I pull a plus 2 out of there. Great. Left on the inside, I have 3x plus 1. Fun. Do I have a common factor? It appears I do. 3x plus 1 is in both of those terms. So I can factor that out front. And when I do, I get 3x plus 1 times x plus 2. Oh. And then what? You do a box and a flower. Okay, in our second case, what I wanted to do is I wanted to give you an example of um, when we'd use subtraction and how we'd use it. It appears to us that we're left with 3x squared minus x minus 2. Here again, I'm going to take the product of my leading and lagging, lagging terms. Here I'm looking at 3 times a minus 2. So I'll write that. 3 times a minus 2. Yes. So then here, it appears my product is going to be a minus 6. All right. So now I need to break down the factors of 6. Here this is going to be 1 and 6 and 2 and 3. Tee hee, tee hee. But because my product was negative, I know I'm going to need to subtract. I'm going to need to subtract to find my b. I need to subtract to find 1. Okay. Do any of these subtract to be 1? Yes. It appears 2 and 3 do. 
So I need to go through and I need to um, find the factors that subtract. So then, don't mind me taking this right down here. Okay, you still with me? Here I got, here I got, here I got 3x squared. What I want to do is I want to rewrite my middle term. Here, the signs are different and the big ones negative. Excellent. Staying consistent with how we've been doing our factoring. So I need to go minus 3x plus 2x minus 2. Now we see here that um, we've rewritten our middle term with the difference of 2 and 3, which were factors of the leading and lagging term. Now that we've done that, we can factor by grouping. Here, I have a common factor of 3x, so I'm going to pull that out. So I pull out a 3x. Left over on the inside, it appears I'm going to have x minus 1. Fun. What can I pull out of this second pair? I can pull a 2. And I do. I'm going to pull a positive 2 plus 2 out of that second product. And I'm going to have an x minus 1. Excellent. Do I have a common factor? Yes, I do. An x minus 1. So then I can pull that out front. x minus 1 times the leftovers 3x plus 2. Awesome. And then what? Yeah. A box. And a flower. I've got this one last example up here. Um, one of our audience members um, asked, how can you tell when it's not factorable? Sure, well, here's how. Um, I have this, similar to our previous factoring problems, what I have is I have 3x squared plus 11x minus 2. Here, what do we do? We take the product of our le leading and lagging. 3 times a minus 2. Excellent. That's going to be a minus 6. So then we need to break it down. Um, factors of 6, 1 and 6, and 2 and 3. Tee hee, tee hee. Are there any factors of, my, of 6 that subtract to be 11? Does this subtract to be 11? No. Does this subtract to be 11? No. So then what? Like Optimus, this polynomial is prime.